All right. My mic on, yes. And desktop sound is on. Yes, okay. <laughs> I was just getting no audio level, so I was just a little bit concerned. But um Yes, so I don't I'm not actually sure how to pronounce your name. Siege White is the closest I've got. You caught it you sort of combined the last five letters together into like one thing. Um But uh yes, here's your replay analysis that I promised to do for today but it didn't because I forgot I'm really sorry um let's take a look so you're playing oh it's a 2v2 against AI sorry I didn't catch who everyone's playing uh Korean Maya okay uh okay so the f first thing is that you don't seem to be doing anything at all that's it's really hard to win the game if you don't take any actions. There we go. Okay, so you're like, you're a little bit late to the to the chase. Um, this time it is a little bit wrong, but like you just you spent five seconds not doing anything. Um, the way that economy works is that it sort of snowballs. So let's say you can choose to get um, plus fifty food at one minute into the game, or you can choose to have plus 50 food 10 minutes into the game. The 50 food early into the game is significantly more valuable because when you have resources early, you can spend time with those resources to get more resources. Like if you have 100 food, you can go create a citizen and a woodcutter's camp, and then suddenly you have more income, and then you just spend nine minutes with that. Um, with that woodcutter's camp and that citizen, and suddenly you've got a wood advantage um, because you accumulated over nine minutes. Okay, so the other thing is again, your research order is kind of wonky, um, and I, unless there's a minor bonus I'm not aware of, which I don't think there is, reading this, um, there's not much point getting this market yet, um, and also, as I mentioned, to I forget. Uh, cataclysm as well. You've researched um, Civic 1, but like you haven't done anything with it. Like you haven't actually gone and built a city yet until just now. So if you look at when the, the science finishes, your science actually finished before your city even started getting constructed. So just on research order, unless you are actually building something that requires this research, don't get any of this first, get science first. The only reason you want to get one of these first is, let's say you want to get military one and immediately rush the guy, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can do. Um, or you get civic one and immediately build a city, which again, you can do, but I wouldn't recommend because it's much more efficient to just build some farms and stuff, um, kind of like you have here. Um, I guess going over some low priority things now. Like, that was the big thing, just actually do stuff at the start of the game and don't research in this order. Um, I'm not going to give you a research order to follow. I'm just going to say, again, research things that you actually benefit from, rather than just researching... Oh boy. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about this in a sec. Um, so you put your market. The most important thing you can do with the market at this stage is get a caravan. It's it's not to get merchants, unless there's like an extremely strong rare. Um, because if well, I guess this is more of a Chinese thing though. Unless you get lucky with ruins. Okay. I I would still say the caravan's more important than the rares though. Um, Unless, again, it's a really good rare. Because these cost wealth, and with that wealth you can either get science 2, which makes everything like easier to research, and faster to research, and cheaper to research, or you can get more scholars once you hit classical, and scholars are really important to get, well, scholars in universities and senate, all of that's really important to get um, early, just a little bit of it, so that you don't get behind on tech. Um, so, I'm just gonna... oh god. Where's your scout going? To 
Does he have waypoints anywhere, or are you just you're just moving him manually, I guess? Or is he an auto explorer? No, he's not on auto explorer. Um, I I'm guessing because I don't see any any rally points, any waypoints that you're moving this guy manually. Um, if you're moving it manually, you really need to pick up the ruins. If you're not moving it manually, then um, just hold down shift and then you can set waypoints like this. I mean, it's not showing because I don't have control here, but it will set waypoints like this. And when he's on a waypoint, when he has more than one place to go, he'll automatically sidetrack and pick up ruins that he finds. Okay, so let's get back to the other stuff I wanted to talk about. This woodcutter's camp is really weird. First thing I want to mention is that this is a three. Right? And if you built it over here, that's a 4. And if you built it over here, oh god, you built one there as well. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, when you have access to a good camp like this, there's no reason to build a, a like a low person camp like this. Um, this costs 90 wood to build the second camp, 70 wood, well, okay, technically the 50 wood for the first camp. 70 wood for the second camp, 90 wood for the third camp, but like you don't build this on standard rules. So the first camp that you actually build yourself is 70 food, and the next one is 110. So like there's, it's really inefficient to build camps that don't have many people available, because let's say, let's say that this, this whole tree batch doesn't exist. So you built a city, and like let's say this doesn't exist either, so you built this city, and you realize, crap, there's no trees nearby. So you have to build one here, and the four that's over here, that's a four, you got seven. But, because these trees are here, you can just build one here, and this is already a seven on its own. So instead of paying uh, 70 timber, 90, 90 timber, you can just, don't build here, and just build, oh, sorry, not timber, uh, 70 food, put the 70 food second camp here and you save that 100 or so 100? 90. You save 90 food. Um, so yeah, that, that's a pretty big blunder in my opinion. Um, I hope one of you is going to pick up that ruin. It looks like this guy might. There you go, 50 metal for you. Good, good boy. Um, what else are they going to say about the farms? Yes, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so, your tech level is really high, considering how much else you've built, which is okay, I suppose. Um, but you'll not really do anything with the tech. Like, you have Civic 2, but you're not getting a third city anywhere. Oh, okay, you're not building one now, so that's not too bad. Um, but like you have access to granaries and lumber mills, that, but you're not building them, and you have access to a senate, but you're not building it, um, and it's not a shortage of resources either, because you have 600, 800, or sorry, 700, 800, 200, so you have enough of everything but maybe wealth. Okay, so let's go back to the farms that you were building earlier. The first thing I've noticed is that you built five farms um, sequentially rather than in parallel. Sorry, no. You bought them sequentially with a single citizen. That's that's an accurate description of what you did. The problem with that, firstly, is that your farms over here aren't even populated yet. The other thing is that there's not even five farms here. There's four. Um, so, populating an existing farm costs, what, at this stage, about 40 food? Yeah, about 40 food for one citizen. But if you build a farm fresh, that costs like 70 timber, dude. So, it's a lot cheaper to man an existing farm than it is to build a new farm. Um, and sort of just returning to this area down here as well. Let's ignore the fact that this farm is empty. And remember that what I just said before, it's much cheaper to just man the farms that are already built. Um, you got your one guy to go around and like, you got him to like, do this and build five farms sequentially without actually manning any of them. I'm pretty sure... Let me just double check the math in my head. Yes, you get more income if you 
build the farm with the first citizen and then just sit on the farm and like you, you, you man the farm to get income. Because every farm that you build gives you a bonus, yes, but the bonus happens regardless of whether you build it now or build it later. The bonus is the same, it's always there, it's always the same amount, it's always... It all, always only happens once. You never get like the bonus twice for building it earlier, right? Um, but the income only happens if you man the farm. So it makes more sense to build the farm and get the bonus and then man it for the income, right? Because you're getting the bonus and the income every time you build the farm and then man the farm. However, if you build the farm and then move on to build another farm, Yes, you get the bonus, but you're going to get the bonus anyway if you build it later. So there's no benefit to doing that. However, if you man the farm, you get the income. So you're getting something for free, essentially, if you build it and man it instead of just building it and then like leaving it. Um, you're not building any metal production, which is odd. Unless I'm missing something. Where are you getting 48 metal from? This just doesn't give metal. Peacocks give a little bit of metal. I don't see any mines. Yeah, you have zero, zero mines. I don't know, maybe you have another rare somewhere that I'm not seeing. I don't think there's any bonus for anything, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you're getting... Uh, 48 metal, but you are, so good for you, I suppose. Um, much like Cataclysm, I'm noticing that you you have this ginormous amount of, like, float. That's the term that I've heard Rise of Nations players use. I don't know if there's a more um, general term for it that applies to other games as well, but you have all this stuff in your bank. Like, you've banked up a shit ton of resources. This is enough to build... This is enough to go bang, well, other than wealth, but you can sell stuff to get some wealth. Speaking of wealth, get more caravans. Um, anyway, this is enough resources to go bam, 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 other than knowledge. But the knowledge you can kind of solve by just, like, building more scholars. 160, 160, 160, 180. If you get the science, everything else is cheaper, so that's about mm, 700. And then this will be about 350, give or take. So it'll be 1,050, which you can get close to if you build another half dozen scholars. But yeah, you have the resources to do that. Um, and then you can build another city, like let's say over here, and you can build another city, let's say over here. And then your economy is absolutely nuts. And you can build a senate so that you don't have to research economy, uh, economy commerce three. That's the other thing I've, I'm noticing, is that your senate... Wow. Uh, okay, I'll get back to this. Um, you haven't built a senate. So let's, let's quickly have a look at what... Um, Commerce 3 versus Republic gives you and that sort of thing. As I notice you've... <laughs> it's another person from your farm. Okay, so senate costs... Uh, usually more than that, but your Maya, so stuff is cheap. So I think it's normally 50-50, something like that. Um, I thought it was more than 50-50, I'm not, maybe I'm misremembering. But in any case, let's say it's 50-50 or 70-50, one of the two. You build it, and then the government costs, I think it's 72... Uh, for Republic, it's 72 food and I think 72 metal. Um, and that increases your commerce cap by 50. But let's look at... well, I can't anymore, but if you look at commerce 3... Commerce 3 isn't that expensive in timber, but it's quite expensive in knowledge. And knowledge is hard to get. And knowledge is expensive to get, because knowledge costs a lot of wealth early game. Well, kind of all the game actually. Knowledge costs a lot of wealth to produce. Um, so if there are ways that you can spend a different resource instead of knowledge, it's usually cheaper to do that. 
Um, so instead of like getting all this commerce, you could instead be getting a senate and you get a republic. Like you research republic there. Um, that's way more efficient. So, returning to this, I have no idea why you've built these. Um, because you're not using them. And sort of, I don't know if you watched the the um, replay analysis I did for Cataclysm, but one thing I mentioned during that replay analysis is it doesn't. Let me rephrase. Everything that costs resources to build needs to give you something to justify the resources spent on it. These are not directly giving you anything because you're not actually building anything out of them. Um, and I see you researching this stuff and I'll return to that in a second. Um, but short of that, you're not actually like using them to build anything. So you've just dumped like more than 200 timber, more than 200 timber, and more than 200 timber. You've dumped more than 600 timber into building these six buildings and you're not actually using them to produce units. If you want to build them, that's fine, but you need to use them to do something. And the reason I'm saying that researching upgrades isn't really doing anything is because if you out-tech the unit that you're trying to build, so you're you have just researched this. Okay, you've researched everything, so it's hard to show you. You've literally researched everything. Um, if you build a low-tech unit, let's say you built slingers, right? Like, these aren't slingers. Like, okay, let's just go to um, your friend. Let's see if he has some low-tech units. Uh, yeah, okay, so here's a light horse. That's a good example. So. Light horse, if you build a few of them and then upgrade them, that's definitely faster to build and potentially cheaper to build than if you did it in reverse order. Right? If you can get away with it, you always want to build the unit and then upgrade it afterwards. Um, and usually you don't want to upgrade them every age either. Because upgrade costs are expensive, but the benefits are not always that significant. It sort of depends on the age. Some are better than others. Um, and if you have a lot of units, it might be worth it. Because of ramping costs. So, like, let's say you have uh, 10 total units. Let's say you have 3, 3, 3, 1. Um, the upgrade costs are not going to be... Oh, good god, dude. Okay, so this is this is kind of related. You've just gone and you've spent money to upgrade to age 3 units, even though you have literally none of them as far as I can tell. And then you spent all this extra money upgrading to the age 4 units, even though again, you literally have none of them. So instead of going straight from age 1 to age 4, you've gone age 1 to 3 to 4, and you spent all this, all these extra resources that literally serve no purpose. You've gotten like for some in some situations you can say something was simply inefficient, but in this case it was literally useless. It literally gave no benefit compared to going H1 to H4 because you never built anything in the interim. So that's that's a pretty big resource sink. Um, and I'm pretty sure I was saying something before, but got so distracted by the fact you're doing this, and it's incredibly resource inefficient. Um, what else is there that I'm noticing? Greenery, yes, good. How's your other research going? You've researched basically everything, which is not an awful way to do it, other than the unit upgrades. Um, so I think I was talking about, like, before you don't always want to upgrade every single age. Um, so I can't really show you because I, I can't edit this video properly. Um, if you want to help with that, 
give me money for a new CPU. <laughs> All the links and stuff are in the description. And until then, I can't edit videos very easily because it's just laggy as fuck. Um, so some ages have really good upgrades and some of them have not as good upgrades. But as a good rule of thumb, in the first maybe 15 or so minutes, you usually want to upgrade every two ages. So you build tech one or age one units, and then you upgrade them to age three units, and then you upgrade them to age five units. There are exceptions, um, and you'll get more familiar with when something is good and when something doesn't make sense. Um, but, and I can't show you like the stats because you keep upgrading the units without building them. But if you, let, let's just use these two units as an example. So, I don't know what your tooltip settings are on, but if you set them to high detail, then like you'll get all this extra stuff, like hits, which is hit points, attack, armor, range, blah blah blah. So if you compare these two units, your hit points increase by an okay amount, your attack increases by 2, your armor increases by 1, your range increases by 2. So this is actually not a bad upgrade. And then if you look at these two, that's also not a not an awful upgrade. It's not quite as good as this guy, unless you need the range. But if you have a lot of fusiliers or fusiliers, still don't know how to say that, or if you have a lot of musketeers and you try to upgrade them to this, it's going to be really fucking expensive, like really fucking expensive. So it's not always worth it to upgrade just for one age. Um, uh, if you're in combat, like if you're actively fighting, it, maybe it's worth it. Oh my god, you still have no government. Uh, uh, okay, well, build a government, build a senate, research a government. Based on the fact that you have capped all your resources to abysmal efficiency, I would highly recommend you research the uh, Republic government. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you keep pumping commerce, but it's really cheap to just research Republic. So, you know, definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we have a nice little pause. Got a second library. How many libraries do you have? One, two... Holy shit. You have... Well, well just three. Okay, three's not too bad. Um, in my personal experience, I see very little reason to have more than two. But three's not too bad. If you want three, like, there's much bigger things to worry about than that. Um... So, you're building all this stuff, which is okay. Um, this smelter makes no sense, though, because there's no metal here. There's no, there's no mountain. You're not gonna get a mine here. These buildings only work for the stuff in the city's economic radius, which I can't really show you without trying to build something. So it's only gonna work within the circle, dude. Um, if you build a mine outside of the circle, like if you want to build a mine over here, which you can't because there's no mountain. Oh, actually, there's a mountain there. But if you want to build a mine over here, this smelter, it doesn't do anything. So you've just spent this amount of money, this amount of timber and wealth, building a smelter. And it literally doesn't do anything for you. You can't even argue that it makes your research faster because you already have a smelter here, and you already have a smelter here. And speaking of this smelter, it doesn't do anything there either. Is this even in range? Okay, this is this is the only city that should have a smelter right now. None of your other cities are in range of a mountain. So this city should have a smelter. This smelter shouldn't be, have been built. This smelter shouldn't have been built. You're still missing a farm at the city as well. Um, I don't know if you just didn't notice that at the start of the game.
And so far I've been focusing almost exclusively on economy stuff. Um, I think it's important to like, figure out the economy stuff first before you worry too much about military. But I would like to say, holy shit, you have a lot of resources. But holy shit, you're not actually building anything, you're just researching upgrades constantly. Um, I'm guessing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm guessing you're just pressing tab and researching basically everything you can find. Um, that is not the worst thing you could be doing, with the exception that you don't want to do it with unit upgrades. Um, uh, going over some other fairly basic things, you've, um, you've like shift clicked to. Well, I don't know if you actually literally shift clicked, but you've built ten riflemen here. You've gone, hold down shift, click click, ten riflemen, right? But you have a barracks right next to it. So instead of building ten riflemen really slowly, you could have gone five riflemen here, five riflemen here. Then you would have ten riflemen right now instead of five. Um. So that's just like a really easy optimization to make. Like it's not um, complex, I guess. Like it's not you not have to you're not like going. Oh man, should I set up a trade route here, or should I set up a trade route here? Like it's that's that's complex. This is simple. Just when you have two buildings that can both produce the same thing, instead of producing ten at one, produce five at each. And then you will get them built twice as fast, which is, you know, good. I am going to begin to yell at you for not having a government yet. You're in the industrial age and you still have no senate, as far as I can tell. Yes, you still have no senate. The... The Patriot is possibly the single most important unit you can build other than citizens in the first not even the first probably throughout the entire game if i could choose between building a patriot and building an icbm i'd probably pick the patriot patriots are extremely valuable um and the government is also like quite valuable and i can't show you because you don't have a center yet um, and I just want to keep, like, hammering that home, build your senate. It's really important. It's really valuable. It's not expensive. It gives massive benefits. Um, instead of pulling off production here, um, just take a quick look at, well, look at your vision. You know that he has only these units here. And you know that he's hitting your city. Your citizens are actually not in any danger. So just bring these riflemen down like you are and just like tell them to hit that and then you're fine. I see your friend is in the industrial age and is not using guns. <laughs> that just amuses me. Um, <laughs> but yes, you, you don't need to pull these citizens away. Just because your city is being damaged doesn't mean your citizens are in danger so you you don't need to like press the alarm button um have a quick look at like what's actually attacking you what they're actually attacking and then you know from there in this context in this situation you can figure out that hey they're not actually hitting my citizens they're probably never going to i don't need to lose this production um and another thing i don't know if you have this enabled, but I do personally recommend having this checked. Um, I don't know why I don't. I usually play with it on. I don't know if I've just accidentally toggled it off or if it's just the replay or what. But um, that means that when you alarm it, well, it's hard to show you. If you alarm this, then when the city is no longer being attacked, they'll automatically essentially press this button for you. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about it. And most of the time, the, like, the automatic decision making is correct. They actually come out once it's safe, and they usually don't come out when it's not safe. So, you know, I do recommend turning that on if you don't have it on. Up to you, but, you know, one less thing to worry about. Um, uh, okay. So, generally speaking, you don't want to pull citizens off of resource production in order to build a wonder. You might want to pull off, say, two people, but you definitely don't want to pull off eight, because that's a very significant difference in income. Um, you don't really need to have eight citizens building a wonder, especially when it's a wonder that isn't being contested. Like, let's say Green was building the Engelwort, right? And you're like, oh shit, I wanted that wonder, um, so I am going to dedicate all these guys to building it. Let's pretend this is the Engelwort. So I'm going to dedicate all these guys to building it. Bam. And then you look over and, holy shit, he's using four people. I can do this. I can beat him. In that case, okay, maybe. Maybe that's worth it. I'm going to say it's probably not, but maybe it's worth it. And against the human, you definitely like get that emotional mental edge. Because, hey, I'm getting that wonder. And you're not, because you suck. And I have more citizens building it. So you get that edge, but the AI doesn't really care. So I'm going to say it's not worth it even then. But that's like the only time you want to pull citizens off wonders other than if it literally wins you the game to build the wonder but you don't even oh you do have wonder points on i don't know i didn't see like what the number was to win with those wonder points but you're not really that close to beating them because they're building the wonders as well um the other amusing thing I've noticed is that you're always short on timber, even though you're playing Maya. And the main reason for that is because you're building a shit ton of stuff you don't benefit from. And good lord, you don't need to get <laughs> 32 woodcutters. Um, uh, <sighs> So right now, you are producing over 1,000 wood, but you're getting less than half of it because you don't have enough good lord, you're still upgrading units. Okay, well, hopefully after today, you're never going to do that again. And in the meantime, yes, you have so much wood income that you could literally take all these citizens all 13 of these citizens press this button 13 times or if you have different options like if you have if you have this selected then it'll be a bit different but if you get all these guys i don't know what happened to the last one but oh this is one okay so it's only 12. if you did this 12 times this would still be 500 and it would still be inefficient you never want this number to be more than 90 percent ideally um but under some circumstances you can justify maybe 80% but yours is 45 yours is so inefficient that it's like the children in Africa are gonna haunt your grave because you're being so inefficient with your stuff your food is fine so maybe it's not the children in Africa whoever uses timber the the termites in Africa are gonna haunt your grave because you're being so inefficient with timber that they're actually offended at you um, you, whenever you build stuff that you don't need, stuff that is not helping you at all, which is the case here, is literally not helping you, it literally does not help you at all. The only thing it does is hurt you. Um, because this, all these citizens are hurting your pop cap, 
and all these citizens are making future citizens more expensive. Because when if you build a citizen, the next one's more expensive. So like, the fact that you have all these guys who you could literally just kill them, all of them, and you would still be at 500, you would still be at the cap, is absurd. Um, it's wildly inefficient. It's yeah, it, it's just wildly inefficient, and I'm, I hope you understand that. Um, and building, building like this smelter is wildly inefficient. This smelter wildly inefficient. Blah blah blah. You're doing a lot of things that don't benefit you. You're you're constantly spending resources in a way that is that damages your economy because the resource is spent, which is normal. Spending resources normally, you know, hurts your economy a little bit in the short term. But then you're not getting anything out of the investment. And that's what it usually is. It's usually an investment. Like you build a farm, right? And it costs you quite a bit of timber. And you get a little bit of food for the bonus, but not as much as the timber you spent, right? And the citizen that you you had to build to produce the farm, to build the farm. But you get the food income, right? Except that over here, all these guys are not actually giving you any income. So you spent, it's like 80 food per citizen. Okay, you lost some citizens somehow. Or you made them cheaper with a, a rare, I'm not sure which. But let's say the average cost of these citizens was roughly 60. So you've just spent 60, 120, 180, 240, times 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. You spent a thousand food on these citizens, and they are literally only hurting you because they're hitting you, making you get closer to your pop cat with no benefit. And 1, 2, 3 woodcutter scamps. Those, well, I, I guess you got sugar or something, because everything seems cheaper right now. But that was costing you, let's say, a hundred and thirty average before you got the sugar. Because you built it before you had the sugar. You just spent. 1300 food, or maybe 1400 food, maybe even 1500 food, doing nothing. For building all three of these woodcutters camps, you got, what is it, 75 timber? For completing all of these, and you spent 1500 food to do it. Um, again, just returning back to wildly inefficient. And what's making this even worse, I'm gonna just pause it because I want to talk about this attack as well, maybe, is that you have these farms here, you're not a, you're not actually hitting the uh, food cap, but you have all these guys here, you could just send them to these farms. And you have a granary here, and it has full tech, but instead of sending them to the farms, you're just making them produce wood, except not really because you're not actually producing any more wood with these people. Anyway, back to this attack. So, I'm gonna pause it again real quick. Your guys are down here, which is fine, I guess. But, uh, you have quite literally 10,000 of basically every non knowledge resource. Because the wood is so cheap that you could just buy it to 10,000 and you would still have 10,000 wealth left over. Despite that fact, you've built almost no military I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out real quick and we're gonna do this live because that's gonna be more entertaining mm, okay and you're gonna have to bear with me here because I didn't plan to do this I don't know what that is so I'm just gonna make a new one okay yes now you see the screen? Perfect. Okay, so we are going to draw you something once this loads. Okay, perfect. So now you see. Look, it's beautiful, isn't it? I'm just going to put my face on top because that way you can see my pretty smile. Okay, so the way that Ron works 
in in essence at a really fundamental level is you get and I'm going to change it to a font that I like because you know it's my video I can change it to a font that I like and we're going to make it kind of big so it's easy to read maybe not that big okay so you you spend float why does this look so blurry that's because we're zoomed in okay let's not zoom in that you spend float which is resources banks all right so I'm gonna make you a little flow chart you spend float that lets you get income um, resources over time or it lets you get military which I don't know what to put in the brackets um, let's go say attack defend in the brackets because I don't know what else to put so whenever you whenever you um we need an arrow build arrow sure let's use that okay let's make it uh eight perfect whenever you have a float it either you can either use it to produce more income or you can use it to produce military There is a third option that I haven't talked about, and the reason I haven't talked about it is because it's not useful. The third thing you can do with resources that you have in the bank, the float, as people seem to call it, is nothing. And in brackets, we're going to put nothing, because that's exactly what you do. This is the third option that you have. Whenever, and we need to make this one orange, whenever you have this many resources, you can choose to do this, which you can't do because you've already hit cap. Um, if you put five more people at this mine and five more people farming at your farms, you're going to hit the cap. So you can't realistically do this. So we're just gonna we're just gonna scribble over this in red. This is not an option anymore. You can't do this. Your income is capped. Unless you go global prosperity, which you could do, but you're probably not going to do just yet. Because you don't have enough knowledge. So this this is an option. So you have two options here. You can either build military, or you can do nothing. Unfortunately, you've chosen to do nothing with your resources. So now I'm going to take my monitor off, because you've probably seen some stuff you're not supposed to see, but it's okay, because I vaguely trust you. Uh, and now I gotta figure out where to put my camera. I'm gonna say it's there. Alright, that works. So those are the things you can do with this giant float. Um, I, I can lock onto your point of view, but it's not really gonna help. Because I can't see, like, what you're clicking on. But, when you have this many resources, and this much income... I, I'm not... I'm not sure what you're doing with your attention. Attention is a resource. And that's part of the reason why rating is so effective. Because when you raid someone, they spend the resource of attention dealing with you. Not only do you directly hurt their economy when raiding, you hurt their resource of attention. You make it harder for them to focus on building a military. You make it harder for them to focus on building or on offensive military. You make it harder for them to focus on building up their economy because they're dealing with your raid. Um, but I, I don't know where your attention is because it's not being used to produce units. Your economy is already capped, so it's not that. Um, and I'm just, I'm really curious, genuinely, I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, rude or facetious. I don't understand where your attention is being spent. Um, you have the capability with just these six buildings to build it and this much, uh, income, if you again fix up these two, because you have the capability, you have the mine space and you have the farms to fix this. And you definitely have the citizens spare to fix this. Um, if you actually just went to these and just 
you're doing it again, you're building everything at one when you have two. Um, but if you got your... How do I select a Patriot? Let's look at the controls. I'm sure there's a hotkey for selecting a Patriot. Uh, barracks, market, city, building, general? Nope. Um... How do I how do I find a patriot? We find general slash select patriot ripe race. Okay, that one? No, uh, you not have a patriot yet? Hang on, have you still not built the senate? Oh my god! Okay, well. I was going to talk about a little bit of that, but I guess I can't. I'm just going to say, like, for the 40th time, build the Senate instead. Um... <laughs> really making this rough. Um... If you would like to learn more about what a Patriot does, I have written an article, you can check it out, it's... Oh, I've never done this before. This this little thing, it now and then it shows my website, mhlobby.com. If you check that out, you can probably find the article there, just use the top navbar, click on Ron, one of the more recent articles I published as of when I'm recording this. But the TLDR is that governments, I didn't, the article's not even about governments, but governments are really valuable, patriots are really valuable, and if you don't have patriots, maybe you don't have the Thrones and Patriots expansion, but you do because you're playing extended edition, but even if you didn't have the expansion, you must get a general. You have no patriot and no general, and if you want to find out what, like, their benefits, go read the article. I'm not going to go over them here, other than to say that they're extremely valuable and you should never have any game ever where you don't build them. I literally can't think of any standard rules game mode where you should not be building a patriot, or at least a general. Um, I, I don't think there's much else to say. So... Really, the biggest things are... Uh, don't research... I have to make sure my finger's on the camera. Don't research stuff that doesn't give any benefit until you need it. So, again, at the start of the... Oh god, your tech level's too high. We need to look at the AI's library. Their tech level's too high. What about this guy? Oh my god, okay, well... <laughs> At the start of the game, don't research Civic 1 for the first... Um, for the first tech, unless you're rushing a city. Don't get Commerce 1, unless you're rushing a market. But I'd like to counterpoint that by saying, don't rush a city, don't rush a market. They're both not efficient to rush. As far as I'm aware, the most efficient standard opening for every nation without a specific bonus is to get, I can't show you, is to get science one first and then civic one and then at some point after that you get commerce one unless you need military one for um, a barracks. And the reason for that order is the science makes other research cheaper, it makes the other research faster, it makes your scout have more line of sight, it might make some other things have more line of sight, I'd check but I can't because you know your tooltips aren't here because everyone's too high tech. Um, and it also increases the ruins bonus that you get from you know picking up ruins. So the default is 25, you research science and it becomes 50, you research science 2, it becomes 75 and it keeps going up by 25 each time. And you never have... Your bottleneck is never... Damn, my civic was too slow, right? You never... It's really hard to show you without rewinding the replay and I can't. I have to restart it, but I, I only want to watch it through once. Um, 
Like, at the start you're building the farms, you're sending your guys to the woodcutters camp. Um, and then at some point you build your second city over here. If you go science one, well, let's pretend this is science because I can't show you <laughs> and I need, I really want the visual aid. Let go, if you go science one and then civic one as soon as science one is done. If you're building farms and sending people to woodcutters camps, you never have an issue where civic isn't done in time. So there's only upsides and there's no downsides. Um, and one of the reasons that this early market is really, like a market before you have two cities is bad. Or well, bad's too subjective. It's inefficient because it costs 80 timber. It's a little bit less because you're mile. But for everyone else it costs 80 timber to build this market. And it gives you a little bit of wealth. And it gives you a little bit of wealth income. But without access to a caravan, it's it's like stunted. It's not it's not acting to its full potential. So in order to get it to its full potential, you want to build the city first, and then build the market, and then build a caravan at the market. I'm not really sure what, what the hell. These are all light ships. Okay, no, they're not. They just look the same. This is kind of funny to watch. That's a lot of subs. Anyway, um, so <sighs> fine. I'll put it on the screen again. Um, when you have resources, you do one of these three things. Um, generally, early game, you want to do this, and then you want to do some of this so that you can defend yourself. Even if you don't want to attack, even if you don't want to do this. You still want to do this, right? You don't want to die just because you haven't done this. You haven't built any military. But you absolutely have enough resources, both in float and in income, to build a shit ton of military. If you built another five docks here, and you just went to each dock, and you just don't do this. Alright, let's pretend this queue is empty. If you just click this once, this once, and this once, so these three, not the not the aircraft carrier, because that's that's not what we want. And then you just press this button, and then you rally point them here, and you just you just do that for all five, and you build a tank, and you push the infinite Q button or the hockey is Q. If you press one of those two, and you do that for all of these, you just rally point them here with the ships at the coast, that's important. Um, and you just did one, two, three, infinite queue, one, two, three, infinite queue, tanks, infinite queue, tanks, infinite queue. Um, armored cab is not as good for a full fight. You almost never want to build them for a uh, like normal assault. They're better at skirmishes because they are pretty, they die, they die fast, that's the problem with them. So. You can build at an auto plant. Obviously, you only build one thing at a time, right? Everyone understands that. If you're building, if you're spending the time to build armored cav, that's time that you're not building tanks. So, given that tanks are more valuable in like assaults, like full on, I have 50 units, you have 50 units, let's fight it out. Tanks are more valuable, so you don't want to build armored cav. Armored cav isn't bad, but you know, you don't want to build them if you can build a tank instead for that type of fight. So just infinite queue the tanks, um, just, I don't know, you could do infinite queue 1, 2, 3, infinite queue that, rally point them, there's a four there now, uh, rally point them here, rally point all those units here, you have AI, dude, pretend you didn't have AI, my advice is if you don't have AI, rally point them here, wait two minutes, you have an army big enough to wipe out this army, you have an army big enough to take out this fort, this fort, this city, capture that city, take out that city, take out these guys, take out this city, and then you... Green's dead. Because you have enough resources to do that. Unfortunately, you're not... Um, you're not really building stuff. Um, and I'll just... 
bring this up on screen one more time uh, and we're gonna we're gonna open up a new a new canvas for you <sighs> so the bottleneck for converting and I need this to be black on a new layer the bottleneck for converting resources into military units the way you do this and all of this I is fairly straightforward but like maybe it helps to think about it like this the way you do this is by having unit producing building buildings unit producing buildings is how you convert resources into military units so if you have <laughs> I'm going to do this in a really simple way if you have lots of resources lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of resources if you have lots of resources but you only have one unit producing building you get bottlenecked by that and it's really hard to produce military units quickly you have all these resources resources which allow you to produce military units quickly but if you don't have a lot of unit producing buildings you can't do that so and AI again, AI makes this retarded. So like, let's pretend you don't have AI. But if you have all these resources, if you just build like a whole shit ton of docks here, or don't, not a shit ton, if you just put four docks, right? And you went boom, 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 infinite queue. And you selected all the, all the docks, all the shipyards. And you just like rally point them towards the enemies, like here, you rally point them there, right? That means that this is no longer bottlenecked. It would it would become oh I don't want that. It would become more like this. You'd be converting lots of resources into lots of military units if you have lots of unit production unit producing buildings. So, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's how the bottleneck works, if I take off my monitor again. So, when you have lots of resources, basically you can afford to just build an utter metric shit ton, fuck ton, boatload, crap load of unit producing buildings and just spam the fuck out of them because you can afford to. With this amount of income and with this amount of float, I'm fairly confident you could produce 10 units simultaneously for about 10 minutes, maybe more. That's how absurd that is. You have enough resources here and enough tech to literally not use strategy. You could literally win. Let's say you built another... Okay, before I, before you build those, um, build them close-ish to where you're fighting. Um, and if you want to know more about that, I have an article about that too. So go check out the site somewhere over there. Like, right there! That's so convenient! Like, right there! Go check that out. Um, and that sort of covers why you, you should put it closer to the front of the fight. But let's say you had these six, let's say there's three times as many of them, and they're all here, like bam, 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 like that. So select all of those, and you just infinite, there's just, you can, you can grab buildings, and you can, you can control group them. So just control one, control two, control three, blah, 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 and then to reselect them, one, two, three, four, same as the number you pressed before. And that extends to F1, to F3, F4, F5, F6. Um if you want to. So you have all all these imaginary buildings here to select all of those buildings, put them at control group, and with their infinite queue going, you can literally win the game from this position by not controlling the units. That is how far ahead you are. You can win the game without controlling the units. If you just control the rally points. That's how far ahead you are. You just click them, the rally point here until the city falls. 
and then you click the rally point here until the city falls and you have literally eliminated green that is that is these two charts in a nutshell you have lots of float which you have converted into lots of income which you can then convert to lots of military without the defend because we're doing attack now and you do that quickly by having lots of unit producing buildings to make lots of military units and then you just pummel this guy into the ground because there's nothing you can do about it because it's AI, it's not that smart um, <laughs> and then you just win the game that's, that's Ron in a nutshell um, use resources to make more resources once you have lots of resources, well not lots of resources, once you have some resources you can build some military to attack the other guy if you have lots of resources you can build lots of military to attack the other guy and then you just win that's it, that's Ron um, I'm just gonna hyperspeed the rest of the replay unless there's something interesting to talk about because like there's really anything that happens after this point is so unimportant relative to all the other stuff I've talked about um, that I don't think there'd be like much to learn plus I have no idea how long this replay is because I haven't watched it before <laughs> looks like it's, it's a pretty long one um, Okay, you're attacking good. Problem is you're not actually hitting his capital. It would make more sense to just go for his capital instead. Or like at least go for the city next to his capital and then the capital. You have all of this, you have AI, so you're producing units instantly. <laughs> uh wait, hang on. Do you have a general? This is my question. You do not have a general. Okay, so once again, just that thing over there, that link over there, it's Twitter at the moment, but you know, later, later when it's the proper link. Um, go read the article, learn how to use Patriots and Generals a little bit, and understand why that they're so valuable. This army would be twice as effective if it had a Patriot or a General with it. Um, it's, it's like as important as having supply. That's how important it is. So back to hyperspeed as you slowly take out this guy. Really slowly. Hang on, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Who launched that? We're gonna look up the hotkey for to finding missile silo. Find unit or building. Temple, tower, fort, patriot, citizen, supply wagon, spice scout, blah blah blah, missile silo, X. Is that you? Or was it him? Okay, he hasn't researched you, so it must have been you. Um, you literally have an ICBM here. You literally have world government. And AI. And this guy doesn't have missile shields. You can take this ICBM. You can launch it here. You can take this army. You can click them here, and you eliminate green. I, I don't really know what else to say. Right now, at this very moment, you can take this guy out in about 20 seconds flat by just moving these guys here after nuking the city. This nuke is going to clear out Roughly this area, maybe like roughly this area. So all these units over here, which are mostly decoys, but you don't know that yet. Uh, they're just gonna die. And these units here, your army's gonna destroy them. They stand no chance. Nuke the city. You come in, save the day, be a hero. Go over here. Oh, that's green. Go over here. Win. Take out green. And the light blue capital. So after that, you have an Armageddon of 10, that's fine. Does Light Blue have Missile Shield? Yes, they do. So you can't nuke them, but what you could do is infinite Q units to assault him. 
after you take over green. After you take over green, you're going to get control of this and this, and you're going to get control of... Where is this auto plant? Uh, he doesn't seem to have any nearby, but that's fine because you can build them. You can build some stuff here. You have AI, you have a shit ton of resources. You can take these guys and you can just infinite queue them here. And then you win the game because you eliminated both of the players. But instead, you're attacking his cities that don't matter. His capital is right here. You have vision of his capital. But you're not attacking it. Don't know why. Um, when you have world government, you don't need to capture all these other cities. You just need to take out the capital and the guy instantly dies. And you do have world government. You researched it like a, a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm just going to hyperspeed again. Um Again, I don't I don't think there's that much to talk about. This army would do a lot better if it had support. Uh okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So I notice you're building a lot of siege and a lot of armored calves. Uh don't do that. <laughs> and use rally points, just select the buildings, right click there. Better yet, build a Patriot and right-click the Patriot. Okay, so let's let's say that this guy, let's call him Patriot. We're going to rename him Patriot. Just ignore this text here. Patriot. This is your Patriot. Take your unit producing buildings. Right-click on the guy. Right-click on your Patriot. And then get your Patriot. And make him group 1. Control 1. Make him group 1. And then, whenever you produce from here, they will automatically be included in the Patriot's group. So, you could have... If you rally pointed this... Beforehand, this would all be group one automatically. And they would all have much better combat capabilities because they have a patriot nearby. But they don't because this guy's not actually a patriot, he's an anti aircraft missile, and that makes everyone cry at night. But it's okay because we can solve that problem next game. <laughs> next game after you notice this. Please, for the love of God, build a senate, build a patriot. <laughs> Patriot comes out automatically once you research the government, so just just get that and you know use it and get these buildings. Uh, produce more tanks, produce less armored cav. I think that's that's important too. You have a lot of anti-tank here, but they don't have many tanks. They have armored cav and they have infantry. I would say your army comp could use quite a bit of work. It could use some help. You're building a lot of siege, you're building a lot of anti-tank, you're building a lot of armored cav. It would be more efficient to just build a mix. If you're not sure what to build, just build a mix. Against AI, it'll work fine 99% of the time to just build a mix of stuff. Make sure you aren't missing stuff, like make sure you have supply wagons over here, make sure you have some anti-air over here. Because uh, that way helicopters aren't such a problem. Okay, so you've not nuked his, he moved his capital. Okay, well, I guess he accidentally destroyed his senate and he rebuilt it. But in any case, I, I think the rest of the game is pretty self-explanatory. Where are you building these units? Oh, over here, okay. Fair enough. Oh god, okay, so. I would like to scold you on building one of, like, mostly a single unit. Um, if you shift click, you can just build 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and then you just select both auto plant. Actually, you can do that with both barracks. Just select both at the same time and go click, 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 click with shift held, and they'll produce a shit ton of units. Like both of these, click, 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 click. Put lots of tanks. Put tanks until you hit the pop cap. Actually, don't do that because you need supply wagons. Okay, build a <laughs> build a siege factory down there. At the siege factory that well, let's pretend it's right here. Siege factory right there. Five, five, five. That'll do. It's AI. You don't need to. You're you're absurdly far ahead in AI, so it doesn't really matter. As long as it's roughly vaguely correct, you're gonna win. Do that. Make sure the patriots with them. Um, I don't think you built a fort. 
but in future games you're gonna want to build a fort somewhere and at the fort which you haven't built so I can't show you uh, there's research slots here and here this one here makes your patriots and generals and spies better so always research this one over here this one over here makes your your forts and towers better so that might, might be useful sometimes but sometimes you don't need this you always want this one over here which I can't show you because the AI has already researched it obviously so back to hype speed I really hope you win the game in the next five minutes because you absolutely can there you go you've taken out green time to finish the job come on just hit the capital you have you have units build some anti-tank get your friend to help uh, your unit should be helping him. Your unit should go right. Okay, he moved his capital. Where did he move it to? You can't see it. Oh, let's move it over there. Either of you have the space program? No, who has the space program? What's the hockey to find a wonder? <laughs> find unit on building. Is there a hockey to find a wonder? No that I see. That's unfortunate. Maybe this guy has the space program. Maybe it got destroyed. I don't know. I didn't see it. I will tell... Yeah, I'm guessing it got destroyed by bombers. Well, in any case, just, just move these guys. <laughs> Onto the mainland somewhere, and you have all these resources. Just, just pull out some troops, fam, and then win the game. I'm going back to hyperspeed because you're taking too long, and I'm running out of hydration and voice. I'm not used to having to run through how long slugfests. A lot of supply wagons. <laughs> Alright, you brought a lot of bombers, which is. Eh. I would have preferred to see a mix, but whatever. You have hit your population cap, but I'm not. I'm not really sure where your units are. I know you have a lot of planes, and I know you have these guys here. Ah, you built planes over there where they're not useful, I see. Well, okay, so don't build them so far back when you have... What the fuck are you doing? You, you've hit pop cap. What the fuck? This isn't gonna work, man. <laughs> you can't build this many planes. Oh, whatever. Okay, so it's an hour and a half. You still haven't beat this 1v2 with 70,000 metal and 70,000 food, and your friend has... More than that still. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, figure out how to finish this game. All you need is to spam troops to his cities and you'll win. Definitely do not need 16 air bases plus these two. You definitely, definitely, definitely do not- hang on, what the fuck? All your people have died. Did you kill your citizens? Oh. You just sent them... Here? For some reason? And now they're all going home. Right. I'm guessing you sent them all here to build the air bases really quickly or something. Which I would like to scold you on, but it really doesn't matter too much. Because you're, again, you're <coughs> hilariously far ahead. You should be able to finish this within a couple of minutes at any one point at this stage. <laughs> Except you're not doing it. I think at this stage, I, orange is 
like trying to win and you're just trying to be lulzy with more air bases than one can poke a stick at, which is fine, but there's nothing to talk about at that stage. Oh my god, it's still going. Approaching two hours, boys. Um, what? Why are you just putting copters? Look at how long they're taking to kill these ships, dude. <laughs> they're not even good at what you're trying to get them to do. Okay, we're nearly there. Come on. Finish the game. Uh, you have all these troops, man. And you have all these resources and you're not using either of them. <laughs> uh, you can't cover it because they have AI. Oh my god. This is... Difficult to watch. <laughs> What are you doing with all- oh my god. I'd like to point out how... This makes no s- hang on, what? Okay, well. How this makes no sense because you have AI. Um, <laughs> they get produced instantly anyway. Hey, this might actually work. Helicopters are good against planes. Oh wait, where did helicopters go? Did they all die? Well... I guess there's some anti air in there somewhere. Either that or they're just being killed by armored cab, I can't tell. Oh my god. Okay, you did it! You finished the game, and it only took you two hours and five minutes, and I want to kill myself now. <laughs> okay, let's have a quick look at a few things. Player speed is really low. Okay, that explains a little bit about where your attention is going. Um, if you have a game that goes late, and your player speed is like well below 50 like it is here, 32. 44 is kind of whatever. 32 is pretty low though. I'm guessing that you just, you're doing things in general just slowly, which is fine. Um, if you haven't played the game much, then you'll get better at that with time and experience and practice. Um, I'd like to have a quick point out at how much stronger your military was than anyone else in the game. Here, 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 here. Uh, a little bit here, but I mean, Orange is your ally, so if they're nearly as strong as you, it doesn't matter. So over here, over here, over here, and a little bit over here as well. A little bit. Military is military's pretty strong right about here. You could have just gone in and wiped out Light Blue if you had just sent the troops. But you didn't, so the game took way longer than it needed to. And you built all these barracks, but you didn't need to. That 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 kind of sums up what I'm what I've noticed in your gameplay. You do things that you don't need to, which don't benefit you. That's my biggest gripe with what you've been doing. You research stuff when you're not using it. You get woodcutter. You got woodcutters camps and put people on them when they weren't producing anything. You built a smelter when there's nothing to smelt. You built a lot of barracks, even though you had AI. You built all these air bases, even though you had no pop cap. Um, and then you built all these units, and then mostly didn't use them. Um, so... My brain's kind of turning a little bit mushy. 
<laughs> from repeating the same things over and over. But hopefully you found that helpful. Um, I I can't really give you another replay analysis unless you become a patron or you donate or something like that or you help me out in some way. Um, otherwise it's just too time time consuming. Um, cause I, not really for Ron, but for League I, I get quite a few requests and I can't tend to all of them. So this takes too long. Um, but yeah, that there's your one replay analysis. Hope you found it helpful. I really hope you fix some of the the most glaring issues there. Um, like not building a senate the entire game. Where are your citizens? Do you have no citizens? You have you have citizens? Okay, can't check, but I'm pretty sure you didn't build senate the entire game. You just captured this guy's senate instead. <laughs> I think even then you didn't research any governments. This building and these well, six options I guess, but you can only select one or the other. You either get this one or this one. Um, this is like one of the most important things you can get and you didn't. Catch you next time, but not really, bye.